Sports on Air. And Alaska Milk wins the Governor's Cup for 1996. And it is now in the history books as only the third franchise in TBA history to capture a Grand Slam. Winning a championship in the fiercely competitive Philippine Basketball Association is hard enough as it is. But winning the coveted Grand Slam is something else. In the first decade of the PBA, it was a little different and seemingly a lot easier. There was no salary cap at that time, and there was no annual draft, which effectively enabled teams who were willing to go out and spend a chance to get the players they wanted. This was what made CRISPA such a formidable team. It had an incredibly talented lineup put together by the maestro himself, Coach Baby Dalupan, with the full backing of one of the most likable team owners of all time, Danny Floro. After denying Glamour Team Toyota a grand slam in the very first season of the PBA by scoring a pulsating 3-2 victory in the Invitational Third Conference in 1975, Dalupan steered the mighty CRISPR Redmanizers, anchored by the deadly trio of William Bogza Donado, who won back-to-back -back MVP awards in 1975 and 1976, shooting star Atoy Ko, and defensive specialist Philip Cesar, all of whom made the mythical five to the first PBA Grand Slam. Then, for the second time in 1983, under the astute Tommy Manotto, who coached CRISPA with unbridled passion. The Red Bonizers once again swept their way to a second Grand Slam. This is the end of the 1983 PBA Open. CRISPA coming up with a Grand Slam via a clean sweep against Great Taste Coffee Makers. Not to be outdone, San Miguel Beer, its team anchored on the core of the great Northern Consolidated National Team, honed to perfection by theory American coach Ron Jacobs and reinforced by the acquisition of El Presidente Ramon Fernandez, achieved the distinction of winning the Grand Slam in 1989 under former import turn coach Norman Black. Smile on the faces of the San Miguel Beer fans, numbering about 5,000 here at the Ultra. While the Grand Slam victories of CRISPA and San Miguel Beer were remarkable achievements, there was something special about the Alaska Grand Slam. It was a triumph fashioned through the years, and one that had the indelible imprint of a well-thought-out build-up under one of the most dynamic and talented young coaches in the PBA, Tim Cohn. The first key move was when Cohn selected outstanding collegiate point guard Johnny Abarientos as the number one pick in the 1993 PBA annual draft. Alaska picks uh, Mr. Johnny Abarientos in the first round. The most valuable player of the 1992 UAAP Wars, the star of the FEU Tamaraus, was the one player that enabled Cohn to redefine the philosophy of the Alaska team to suit the style of Abarientos, quickly described by an exuberant Cohn as the best point guard in the PBA. We were just starting to create the triangle at that point. And that's one of the reasons I wasn't sure about Johnny, because I wanted to go more towards the triangle, which calls for bigger bigger guards, scoring type guards, didn't want a pure point guard type player. But Johnny had the unique skills of being an all-around player. He could score, you know, he could defend. He played, he was five foot eight, but he played like he was six foot four. And uh, um, so he was really the key in terms of that. When we started to expand, going from a more defensive oriented team to a more offensive oriented team, getting more of a balance. Prior to that, we were like JoJo and 11 Little Indians. Everything went through JoJo. We were so predictable. But when Johnny came in, it gave us another weapon. It gave us a, actually a weapon we could focus on. And that's what really started to turn us around. One year later, Abarientos was hastily called in to reinforce an injury-plagued Philippine team at the Asian Games in Hiroshima. 
and his stellar performance soon had sports writers hailing him as the best point guard in Asia. That same year, Cohn made another calculated move by acquiring Rene Bong Hawkins from Santa Lucia Realty when Alaska gave up their rights to high-flying Bong Alvarez prior to the Commissioner's Cup. Coming off two injury-plagued seasons, Hawkins finally showed improvement in almost all facets of his game under Cohn. It was also in 1994 that Cohn made another astute move by drafting former University of the Philippines center Edward Pochuino, despite the fact that many people questioned his choice, claiming that Huino's knees were busted. But Cohn had done his homework. Alaska's team physician had given Huino a clean bill of health, and Cohn had no hesitation in drafting him as Alaska's first-round pick at number five. Huino quickly turned out to be a revelation and played aggressively under the boards, which is exactly what Cohn wanted. One year later, Cohn made another smart move by drafting Philam Jeffrey Cariasso, also in the first round at number six. That same year, 1995, Cariasso proved his worth by winning Rookie of the Year honors before stepping up to play a big role in Alaska's epic 1996 Grand Slam campaign. All the key components started to come together, and, and through the years, we picked up all these players. Uh, and uh, Jeffrey Cariasso came in 95, and it, it all kind of came together right there. And it, and it, everything kind of kind of just molded together in 96, and, and uh, lo and behold, wow, look what, look what we did. We did something special, and it was an incredible experience. But if there was one player who put the finishing touches to all that Cohn had done, that player was Jojo Lastimosa. Long regarded as one of the premier forwards in the game, Lastimosa brought a quiet determination to the court and a sense of character and spiritual leadership that was a hallmark of the Alaska franchise. Epitomized by team owner and two-time PBA chairman Wilfred Steven Utengsu, Fred to his many friends. Fred uh, never came down to put any pressure on us. He never said, we want to win this Grand Slam. Um, you know, he's, he, he, he stayed in the background. Uh, he, he, obviously, he wanted it. It was a huge thing for him. Um, but he didn't put that extra added pressure or burden on us. It was, okay. it was again, that sense of, you've done great. You know, I, I, I love you. And whatever you do from here, it's just going to be, you know, extra icing on the cake. And, uh, but deep inside, he, wanted, he it. wanted it like that, and it was such a strong thing for him to do, and, and a, uh, a, a giving thing for him to do, and to not go out and put that pressure on the players. And I thought that was really neat, because that was kind of, we kind of got together before the conference that how we're going to approach this, and, and we all agreed, let's don't put pressure on the players. You know, if the players do it, you know, they're going to do it. Look what happened to Pop the previous year. And uh, it was kind of nice that Pop went through that the previous year because we had a lesson, to uh, a lesson to learn exactly and and uh, and you know so many owners will not do that so many owners come down and they think yeah. you got to push you got to push and push and and they think that if players are pushed they sometimes play better for us I think the more we relaxed the more we felt uh, comfortable with each other the less we were bickering or talking to each other um, the better we performed and I think Mr. Retensu did a great job of recognizing that and letting us go our own way there. Prior to the start of the 1996 season, Alaska had achieved the distinction of five consecutive finals appearances, winning the 1994 Governor's Cup, beating Swift Mighty Meaties 4-2, and repeating the feat in the 1995 Governor's Cup in a classic victory which went down to the seventh and final game, effectively setting the stage for its epic run at a Grand Slam. Alaska didn't get off to a great start in the 1996 All-Filipino Cup, and as always, the first step proved to be the most difficult. The team lost four straight games at the start of the semifinals, but Cohn and his gallant band refused to quit, 
and showed remarkable resiliency, which was a tribute to its character. They have been talking about this game for the last 24 hours, Dr. J, and this is the time. Yes, alam mo naman talaga, it's going to be a great ball game. Apat na beses sila sila nagsasalubong uh, dito sa All Filipino. Two all ang score, so we can expect a very good rubber match. Now it's beginning to really get filled up, especially in the gallery section. So we should expect an 11,000 person crowd here in yes. the Veneta Astrodome. And from despite a horde of fans chanting, Hinebra, Hinebra. Mo, matagal ang basketball hindi natatapos yan gusto mo siya, gusto mo na matapos pagkakas ni Mosa hits the three you get the feeling that Alaska wants to be where it's most familiar at the finals Gomez pulls the trigger in and out, wild tap by Johnny from behind Johnny Saves it, Gomez shoots, scores! Ah, yun ang pamatay. Oh! Oh, yes! Sa pinadaan ni Johnny yung tira na yun, tignan natin. And Tim Cohn already walking towards me coming to him. Alaska went on to score a masterful 96-83 victory and earn a shot at the perennial all-Filipino champion Pure Foods. Welcome to Game 1 of the Championship for the Finals of the 1996 All Filipino Cup. It's in the air, the intensity, the excitement, and the desire of these two teams to clinch the championship. There is tension, there is electricity in the air. And when you're talking of Pure Foods and Alaska, you're talking of the league's top two defensive teams. When these two teams play and match up against each other, you can expect a classic confrontation. Alaska is now here in the finals at ang motivation nila yung kanilang pagkukuha ng missing jewel the old Filipino championship has never been a championship worn or taken by Alaska kanya this is a championship that is much coveted as far as coach Tim Tone is concerned ito si Jeffrey Cariaso George Alaskimosa trying to shake off Wong Ravena Cariaso galing sa labas sumaksak sa loob binabot niya pala si Rey Evangelista five seconds of the shot pa Alaskimosa pakatlo na yan pakatlo na po yan na triple B well patuloy ang mainit na outside shooting ng Alaska George Alaskimosa nabaki Wong Ravena that's a switch Ramas ang ganda ng pasahan ng Alaska ang ganda ng pasahan ng Alaska ika nga smooth na smooth Ang bagay nito mga kaya patrimonyo na bagay fokus. Patrimonyo kaya sa clear shot, yes. At buhay bigla ito mga fans ng Pure Foods DJ Hot Dogs pito na lang. Ang kabang tira ng Alaska at four minutes and forty five seconds remaining. Matagal tagal pa rin ito ng stretch na hindi nakakaskor ang Alaska pito na lang ang kabang tira ng Alaska pero Alvin Patrimonyo will go for a three point shot. What a big one! That was a big one by Alvin Patrimonyo. Remember for Alaska. They cannot afford to foul. Seven seconds on the game clock. Evangelista gets the miss. Bina in a boot game. Jericho Tindera. No basket. Sabi ni Referee Morello. Wala raw. Not counted. Dalawang po ng dalawang Alaska. Your foods. Down by two. Ray Evangelista of the PJ Hot Dogs at the line with 2.9 seconds. Great! Tumasok na una. I am. If we're gonna be a challenge, we're gonna box out. Box out. Edward, come to the man. I'm sorry. Edward, go to the rebound here. Great, to the rebound. Okay? Johnny, on the release, I want you to run and get in front, right here. Don't go early now. Don't go early. Come Wait for the release. The ball, get in front of the man right here. Box it out. Alright? You have to get come behind, right here. Don't go early. Kung sakasakali man, magpinti si Kusriya ang lista, dapat makuha nila yung rebound. Because kung makuha ng pure foods yung rebound, ang offensive rebound, yes, they can win it outright. But remember, may isa pang timeout itong Alaska. And abang lista, he misses! Johnny Abang Lista gets the rebound! They win! 
Pure Foods battled all the way in Game 1 before Alaska escaped with a nail-biting 78-77 victory. Alaska won 87-79 in Game 2, behind the heroics of Lastimosa, who had 22, and Carriasso, who contributed 16. Oh, he's hot! Did a warm up yet? Yep. Although Pure Food shot their way to a 99 to 87 victory in Game Three, Pure TJ Hot Dogs take Game Number Three of the Best of Seven Championship Series. No, Virginia, there is not going to be a sweep in this All Filipino Conference. There was no denying Alaska, who took Game 4 75 to 62 to post a surprisingly comfortable 3 to 1 lead in the series. This time around, Abarientos and Hawkins showed away with 18 points apiece. First time to win the volume is in that chance. That'll go. Oh, what a play by Johnny Abarientos. Good evening, Philippines. From the big zone in Davao, Quezon City, we bring you another classic championship game here in the Philippine Basketball Association between Alaska Milk and the Pure Foods TJ Hot Dog. Ten seconds on the shot clock of Alaska. Now to Johnny Abarientos. We're going to pick you for a sweep. Abarientos, what's up? We're going to go home. Let me see. Let's go. From three point range. Alaska with a one point lead at 80-79. Samatara sa Bok Novena. Umaatak ngayon para sa Pure Foods. Sa loob na siya. Inabot ang bola kay Evangelista! It has been Ray Evangelista keeping that Pure Foods flag flying. This game will have to go down into the books, Kinito. As one of those classics again here at the PBA. Oh, definitely so. Now Marcelo and Johnny Amarientos. It's going to be a clear out for him. He'll use the big setup by Bong Hawkins. Carriaso. It's Lastimosa with a three! Yes, again! Lastimosa, another three-point basket! Oh, oh, this is by Bob Hawkins! Uh, Patrimonio gets it over to Bob Ravana! Bob Ravana underneath! Scores! The tying basket with 18.7 seconds remaining! 18.7 seconds remaining! We are tied again! Abonetos looking at the clock. They will go for the last shot. It's down to six. Abarientos. Oh, yes, I'm going to rest two. Who is it? Abarientos. Hawkins. Pirigaki Winyo. Winyo. Oh, the pass. We are going into overtime. They tell us that the team goes. Team goes is taking up a job. In fact, there was a ball. That was fun. So we are in overtime. Patrimonio will be able to get Hawkins. Patrimonio puts it up. Voila. The pick. The Ravena. The Primari. Bola para sa Pure Foods. Binigay kay Dito Pumarek. They're posting him up against Johnny Abarientos. Pumarek, subihin. Uy! And Abarientos fouled out. He has fouled out in this game. They got what they wanted. Johnny Abarientos. Fishing expedition by Dito Pumarek. That's the big one. Pocket. Nabang kay Cordillera. Balik ulit kay Reyes. Four seconds on the shot. Palieto! Big tap there by Jerry Cordillera. Pumarek lets it over to Bob Rivera. Off by Evangelista. Nakuha na naman ni Carriaso. Carriaso, outfit, Jun Reyes, Jun Reyes, Lastimosa! Tabla, tabla tayo! 45 seconds to go. Tied ball game in overtime at 89 all. Here's Patrimonio, laba kay Hawkins. Patrimonio, nalabas kay Pumaret. Ravena asking for the low post pass. Ravena takes it inside! Ito ngayon si Bong Hawkins, binabas kayo ni Jerry Cordillera. Binabas kayo Jun Reyes. Jeffrey Carriaso, up to Lastimosa. Binabas kayo ni Evangelista. Binabas kayo Jun Reyes. Reyes, 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 Reyes! Big basket by Jun Reyes! 20.4 seconds remaining. Tablan na naman tayo sa 91-0. Ravena na sa mga inbound para sa Pure Bulls. 
Bata yes, Patrimonio, puts pure foods in the lead by one, 92-91, 10.3 seconds to go. We are in overtime, folks, pure foods by one, 10.3 seconds to go, miss! Ayun, tumawag ng timeout si Bong Hawkins. Ang situation po natin, pure foods in the lead by one, 92-91, with 9.4 seconds remaining in overtime, Alaska will have possession. Both teams in the penalty, folks. So, hindi po po pwede. Basta basta mag-foul dito. Remember, Amarientos already has fouled out. Last two balls are hazard against the Bacchirista. Too far for a shot. Switch. Got it to Wilson Hawkins. Reyes is over. Block! What a block by Rosela! Rosela with a big block. 1.4 seconds remaining. 92-91. Your foods on top by one. In overtime. Can they get a shot off on time? Here's referee Ernie De Leon. Telling Alvin Fajimoni to give Kevin Ramos some offensive space. Oh! Hey, they foul! They foul! They foul! Oh my gosh! They, they pito! A they foul! Pito. A foul has been committed by Pure Foods! First by Mariasu! Smith! We are fouled at 9 to 2 Mariasu! Can win it for Alaska. And we're talking about the championship. Championship na ito. Pagpinasok ni Cariaso. Alaska wins it! Alaska is going to win it! Oh, 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 teka muna, teka muna! Hey! Alaska! 1996 All-Colotino Cup Champion! Everybody's always accused us of, of winning because of uh, imports, and uh, uh, you know I think the guys today just wanted to come out and say that hey, you know we're the best team in the country right now. I mean nobody else can say they're better than us here in the country, and that's why it was so important. You know in the past it was well we won because of Sean Chambers or we had a better import or whatever. No one can say that now. You know we played, you know we, we dominated the series, we won the series, and uh, you now we're the best team. For Alaska, it was their first All Filipino crown and the only title the team had never won. Hardly had a celebration over their first All-Filipino Cup conquest died down before the Alaska team was back in action, looking for the second jewel in the Triple Crown they called the Grand Slam. The quest started well with Alaska winning its first six games in the PBA Commissioner's Cup before suffering their first defeat at the hands of Formula Shell, powered by the explosive Kenny Redfield 82-79. After dropping an overtime game to Ginebra San Miguel, Alaska won its final game of the elimination round against Santa Lucia Realty to enter the semifinals with the best record, 8-2. Soon, disaster struck. Lanky import Derek Hamilton, who averaged 30.5 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 assists per game in 13 games, tested positive for traces of marijuana during a random drug test. The PBA commissioner's office refused to compromise and Hamilton was gone. But there was always the ever-dependable Sean Chambers to turn to, and although he was slightly out of shape and much smaller than the other imports, Chambers knew the system well and provided the leadership that held the team together at a time of adversity. <laughs> Alaska quickly regained its composure and went on a four-game winning streak before once again facing arch-rivals Ginebra San Miguel in a game that the team needed to win to clinch a final's berth. In another memorable battle, Alaska prevailed 102-98 to in a game that Coach Cohn found almost impossible to explain. 
Alaska lost an 18-point first-half lead, was down by 17 going into the fourth quarter, but somehow prevailed in a remarkable comeback, and then sat on the sidelines and watched as Ginebra clashed with Formula Shell in a sudden death playoff for the second final slot. Beaten in a playoff for a final slot in the All-Filipino Cup, there were many who expected Ginebra, reinforced by shooting star Henry James, to make amends. But it was not to be. But 83 all, if anybody is looking for the definition of suspense, all you have to do is watch this ball game. 35 seconds to go. Tabla tayo, 83. Ginebra beha, tanga na bola, he's on. Now in this kind of possession, you will know, you will note that Formula Shell still has a chance to get back the ball. Saka wala pa sila sa penalty, ha? Yes. Wala, wala pa sa penalty, ha? It's a two-possession game. Here's Baltabe, three-point three shot! Ball! Tomaso! A big basket by the point guard, by the Baltabe! A rookie, mga kaibigan, Baltabe! Put the red road up by three, seven feet, seconds to go! A lot of time left, cannot afford to give up the foul. They don't want the clock to stop. And they don't want Formula Shell to get the points at the strike. They're looking for a three-point shot. Richie Dixon is open! Oh, oh my Richie God! Richie Dixon! A three-point shot by oh! Richie Dixon! The point guard, the guy who's got a starting, the guy who's got a Point guard, the guy who's got a ball to mid. Point guard, the Formula Shell, Richie Dixon. We are tied at 86 all, 10.5 seconds to go. Ang habol ng Formula Shell to send this game into overtime. Ang habol naman ng Ginebra San Miguel to score the winning basket here with 10.5 seconds to go. Of course, you can't count out a steal by Formula Shell and they might still be able to win it in regulation. So Ginebra must be careful in uh, controlling or taking care of the possession. Henry James, what are you going to do? Pilar Palo for us. Sabo de Rebel Santos, pero Welfield, two seconds to go. Welfield, Lord Jesus! Hey! Tomaso! Is that counted? Is that counted? I think it will count. Yes! My God, this is unbelievable! Ken Redfield has won the game for Formula Shell. And Formula Shell is in the finals against Alaska. Now I've seen everything. No one thought that Shell was going to be there. That yeah. was the problem. They knocked out Hinebra on a last-second shot by Redfield, by Redfield on a right three-point. Right at this, uh, this Coliseum, I'm looking at the spot right now. Three steps behind, he throws up a three-point shot at the buzzer and goes in, they lose. Everybody, we had already secured our way in. Yes. We were waiting. Everybody thought we were going to play in Ever. We thought we were going to play in Ever. We were planning for in Ever. We didn't think there was any way that, that Shell could beat in Ever and be there. And so when Shell got in, it was kind of a letdown for everybody because everybody was looking for a replay of the last in Ever series. And so it was kind of a letdown, even for us, mm -hmm. in some ways, thinking we were going to play in Ever and having to beat Shell. That's why we, we, we fell behind and the struggle to get back and get back in rhythm was so difficult. The heroics of Redfield set the stage for a classic championship series, with a 6-5 import carrying the load for Shell against the much smaller Sean Chambers and his Alaska squad. Shell was made up mostly of players who would find it hard to get a spot on another PBA team, but Narvasa made the most of what he had, using players like Richie Dixon, Jojo Lim, and Peter Naron and whipping the Zoom Masters into a solid fighting unit despite being handicapped by the absence of Point Laureate Ronnie Magsanok. Paras misses the free throw, so it's still far from over. Very far from over. Crucial free throw shots being missed in the end game by Shell. Santos missed both. Shell was lucky to get the rebound. Pero may timeout pang Alaska. They have two and there's 5.5 seconds. That's a lot of time. Benji misses both. Again, Pablo challenging. Okay. Scramble. Yes. It's in the house. Oh, Marcel. And Shell. It's all the big win. A big victory here for Shell. Coming off a very, very difficult ball game against Ginebra and going against the toughest team in the league.
Formula Shell took Game 1 85 to 82, but Alaska led by Chambers with 28 points and Abarientos, Hawkins, and Lastimosa scoring in double figures quickly even the count with a 93 to 86 victory in Game 2. Ito na! Todos Santos, the big test, the quality carrier, so bring it to Abarientos, Bukang Alaska nito. Yes, and it's a four on one situation. Yeah. Uh, Transition two points. That has been the story of this game. The pace that Alaska has set. Shell, playing with lots of heart, once again moved out in front with an impressive 85 to 77 victory in Game Three to lead the series two games to one. Redfield, the Mihawa, Clavake, Jeffrey Cariaso. Four seconds. Another shot clock. Jump shot. Three points. Oh shot. yeah. Oh, oh what yeah. a shot. Penny Redfield from three-point range. But just as quickly, Alaska clawed back to tie the series at two off with a hard-earned 79-76 victory. Once again, sparked by Chambers, Hawkins, and Abarientos. It is a nail-biter. Alaska moves in front. They go to Redfield. Well, one timeout for four minutes, Shell. They're still in the long court. Shell has three timeouts to call Alaska two. They're double keeping the ball carrier. Open. Naron. He'll twirl. He's blocked. Ten on the shot clock. Naron says, I want it! No! Di ko malano kung bakit hindi pinasa ni Peter Naron. He was under heavy defensive pressure. And Formula Shell will again give up the foul. Abariento's a big night for the flying A. Ito yung pangalawang tira pumasok muli. Mr. Oitengsu, he's happy. He may not call a timeout. He may not call a timeout, so watch the pass down here. Call a foul, let's go. Tatlon lamang ng Alaska. Kenny Redfield wants the ball. Ito na siya. Redfield tied up. Takes on long, very long. And Lastimosa relays it. And Alaska has even the series. It is now tied at two games apiece. Then came the turning point of the series, and it did happen on the hard court. It occurred in the press room. Tim Cohn, a master tactician and a genius at psyching out his opponents, predicted that Alaska would win games five and six and wrap up the championship. Uh, we came in with the idea tonight, and I know this may sound a little arrogant, but I think sometimes you have to be a little bit confident in this kind of series. And we came into this game tonight saying, Shell won their last game already. They won their last game last Sunday, they're not going to win anymore. We're going to finish this thing on Sunday. Shell fought tooth and nail in Game 5 to prove Cone wrong. But in the end, Alaska prevailed in a low-scoring, rugged defensive game, 70-63. to And Cone looked well on the way to fulfilling his bold prediction. So Hawkins, Lastimosa at the long court, here's Carriasso. Abarietos from the side. Yes, that's it. Coach Tim Cone's predictions have become half true. Halfway. Game number six could be the last, but we're sure not if Chita Narvasa and his gang can help it. However, he didn't reckon with the gutsy Shell squad. Despite five players scoring in double figures for Alaska, Shell ultimately came through 88-85 to to even the count at three games apiece and send the championship series to a do-or-die seventh game. Coach Chito Narvasa to get the teammates to help out in bringing the ball up. Ito na! Dixon to Redfield. Dixon lets it fly. Yes! Oh, yes! 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 Richie Dixon! Oh, what a big save! But they said we shall meet again. So Alaska's party, which was scheduled for tonight, is not going to take place. What a series this has turned out to be. This is the day you've been waiting for, the final game. Game 7, winner take all, the Commissioner's Cup Conference Finals. Are you ready? Redfield, Yes! 
Sabi sa'yo how big that, that uh, free throw shot. Kung pumasok yun, tabla na tayo. Ito na si uh, Kenny Redfield, mga kaibigan, taking over for Shell. Just a one-point lead by Alaska, but they have possession. Oh, so wait a minute, 35. What a mismatch for Winyo. They've got to double team. Picks it out to Abarietos. Hawkins now. Oh, oh big foul! Plus a foul! Oh, what a big reversal hit! Karas makes the first and ties the ball game at 75 ball. 75 ball. Two minutes and 27 seconds to go. Tignan natin itong second free throw. Benzo Mahina. Oh! Benzo Paras grabs it! Last block by yeah. Wenyo! Hindi niya linabas yung bola. Benzo Paras wanted to go for the kill there. Tied ball game, folks. 75 ball. Two minutes and 13 seconds remaining. Last Timosa. Labakevic Pablo. Hawkins! Yes! Yun ang mga tirada ni Hawkins. Two-point lead by Alaska. 77-75. Ken Redfield, maataga lang ang Kewinyo. Benji Paras against Chambers. Wala! Babariatos para sa rebound! Off to last to the front court. Hawkins. Kewinyo. Nagahanap ng papasan. He sees an opening. Si Tixon na nagpapatay sa kanya. Last to boss is open! Yes! Bigla na naman. Two big baskets here by Alaska. This has got to be one of the classics. One of the classics. Dito sa PBA. Yeah. Yun. Two teams just refusing to die oh. and give up. Hindi pa tapos ito, partner. Oh, oh, oh. Romel Santos. Redfield. Three-point shot. Not this time. Paras. Yes. Si Paras. Lastimosa. Redfield gets to it. Titira na naman. Wala. Pablo. Ay, Pablo Rapita. Wala bola. Eh. Can't keep possession. Portante Social. Good inbound. They got to score. In the midfield, Dilabas kay Richie Dixon, Romel Santos. Santos at ahanap, binigay kay Tixon na naman. Ito si Redfield, he's going to challenging Chambers. Lay up by Redfield, won't go, pero nakakuha siya ng foul. Now, very big free throw. Something that has hurt Shell the whole night. They've missed their free throws. Redfield takes the first, however. Three-point lead by Alaska. Redfield, masyado ng ulakas, pero tumalbog pa palahog. Everybody's gonna go after, everybody's gonna go after. Ito na si Wong Hawkins. Johnny Abarientos. Last of us has opened in the front court. Sean Chambers. Somebody's got to give up a foul now. Oh, ito na. Si Elmer Lago. Pinaw si Johnny Abarientos. Look at Johnny. That is not the guy to foul. Sixth and last foul on Benji. No choice yan eh. Siya pinakamalapit sa taong pinasahan eh. Oh. Last Timosa. Very calmly. Makes the first. Importante pa rin ito. Pangalawa ni Jonas, pasok na pasok. And it is now a four-point lead. Takal pa yan. Oh, Kenny Redfield throwing up that shot. Pochino and Alaska will win a championship. With nine-tenths of a second remaining, four-point lead by Alaska. They will take home the Commissioner's Cup trophy. It was here that the class and the championship character of Alaska came through. Once again, the hardworking Sean Chambers held the team together, along with Lastimosa and Hawkins, to score an 83-77 victory and encrust the second jewel in the Grand Slam Triple Crown. Two down, one to go. Clearly, the PBA Governor's Cup would be the toughest as the other PBA teams ganged up on Alaska, determined to prevent the team from winning the Grand Slam. Alaska dropped two of its first three games to Sunkist and Hinebra San Miguel and sported an even 3-3 card after six games with no guarantee of making the quarterfinals. But just as quickly, Alaska turned things around 
winning five straight games to finish with an 8-3 record, which was ultimately good enough for a semi-finals playoff against Formula Shell. This time around, Alaska showed no mercy, running its vaunted triangle offense to perfection. Alaska swept Formula Shell. Alaska continues to march on. They march to their 10th consecutive win, their 8th straight championship appearance. At alam ni Chito Narvasa kung kano kahirap yan. In the other half of the playoffs, Ginebra San Miguel, after being denied a finals appearance in the first two conferences, finally came through ousting sister team San Miguel Beer three games to one to force a showdown with Alaska. Conference Finals. Chambers led the charge in Alaska's 90-79 Game 1 win, scoring 28 points. He was ably backed up by Abarientos with 18 and Hawkins with 17. Alaska Milk by 11 and uh, Alaska top honcho Fred Uipexu enjoying this Game 1 victory. Game 2 saw Chambers put on a dominating performance, scoring 42 points to lead the Alaska juggernaut with Hawkins adding 23, Lastimosa 17, and Carriazo 14 to put Alaska in a commanding position. Ito, Alaska umaatake. Wala si Johnny Barrientos. So Chambers, Alaska storms to its second straight victory. Dito sa serying ito, and pinakikita sa atin ng Alaska na sila talaga ay reding ready na para dito sa championship na kanilang hinahabot the last piece no, sa kanilang puzzle sa taon ng 1996 The fate of Ginebra appeared sealed after Alaska took a 3-0 lead with a 95-82 conquest Once again, Chambers ripped through the Jins defense to score 37 points with solid contributions from Hawkins, Lastimosa, and Abarientos Broken up by Hawkins Got to go to Chambers, two steps ahead. Yes, sir. Yeah. There was nothing that playing coach Robert Jaworski, the living legend of Philippine basketball, could do. His only move in an effort to prevent a humiliating sweep was to change imports. Fred Cofield was sent home and Derek Rucker flew in from the Australian National Basketball League hoping to perform a miracle. An explosive import with a long-range shooting touch, Rucker deemed some pride for Jaworski and Hinebra by leading the Jins to a pulsating 97-96 victory in Game 4. Rucker, one-on-one, one on one, Lapan, Castello. Utong at siya. Whoa, what a move! And Hinebra will win, surviving this one! But that turned out to be Hinebra's last hurrah. Alaska soon regrouped and won Game 5 handily, 91-83. to Once again, the heart and soul of Alaska came through. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Abarientos inside. Yes! Johnny Abarientos gives Alaska a seven-point lead. Here's still by Rocker. Rocker completes the steal. Rocker gives it over to the trail. Goli looks in. Capitao in the door. And there's going to be a loose ball foul. What a year it has been for the Alaska franchise. Two red 
Johnson. John Dennis to Bosa. Kevin Ramos taps it. They don't knock one in the bunch. Johnny Alvarez initiating the steal. Ang bigat na ginawa pa ng uh, Alaska Dock. John Chambers. With 2.7 seconds, we're going to go to the book. We're passing us a hard book. Better put out 2.7 seconds to go. Okay, the referee is uh, telling the crowd to clear out. A tremendous achievement here for Alaska. But even the guy up at Bosch, Paul Hawkins, and Chico de los Cubos, and I've been here since Sandy Jaworski, the Bible that went to go to the crowd. And Alaska Milk wins the Governor's Cup for 1996. And it is now in the history books as only the third franchise in PBA history to capture a Grand Slam. The team had just taken over as coach, that was the last quarter, and he said, Waki, I want you to be the team manager for about 15, 20 years, okay. you know, a lot. And uh, I said, okay, uh, and he said, very important, we have to start somewhere, but it was definitely hard work, and it was not done overnight, like you say, this is hard sacrifice, and, and, and uh, Fred said, you know, let's put a plan into action, let's see what we can get, but he understood, so it took some years to do, but when we got there, we made sure we had the best players, not only talent-wise, but character-wise also, you know. Yeah. You're going to make a lot of sacrifices, and that's what happened, I think. One of the things about Alaska is the close working relationship between Fred, Tim Cohn, and you, in the sense that I think Mr. Uitang puts the broad outlines of what you want to achieve, the goals that he sets, and you and Tim and the players work at it, and you achieve it. Right. You know, it's like this. You can say I'm an extension of the owners, of yeah. Fred, with some with management, but at the same time, I make sure that the players get what they deserve and Tim Cohn gets all the support he deserves because it's very difficult to coach and you need all the support you can get. What's nice is that we have again the team owner who understands all of this, so he doesn't make it very difficult for me. He always looks at the three of us. It's a triangle actually, the three of <laughs> us, team, myself. So we don't do anything unless we consult each other. And I think that's, uh, that's good. You learn more, you've got three heads better than one. one and also of course you know on the court it's the triangle that is effective in management it's the triangle that's effective one of the things also about the the structure of Alaska is that I get the impression that he may feel bad about the team losing a game but he doesn't get desperate about it and say no no I want this guy out of this team I want you to get in a new guy I mean he doesn't like that kind of thing he doesn't do that right if you remember Ron I've been with Alaska for 13 years now yeah. Our coach has been there 13 years and one conference, so he really, you know, that's what's so nice about Fred. He understands this and he likes people who are faithful to the organization, you know, who, who really work hard and stay on. That's a success also, Ron. You get people that will stay with you yeah. in the long time. And that's how you, I guess, you, how you, how championships come about. Now, when you won the Grand Slam in 1996, you were obviously all of you were overwhelmed, exuberant. You were so happy, it was unbelievable. What kind of a feeling is, is it, winning a Grand Slam? And winning the final championship against Ginebra? We knew that, oh, we probably wouldn't be able to do that had we not, uh, uh, you know, gone through the years, you know, it was a lot of sacrifice and all that. So when that Grand Slam, that final game against Ginebra was won by Alaska, I looked at Tim, and especially Fred, I looked at him, and we knew down deep inside we'd get it one day through sheer hard work and a lot of sacrifice. The victory helped complete the coveted Triple Crown. The one shining tribute to the essential qualities of talent, teamwork, and character so dramatically displayed all season long by Alaska. Alaska smashed so many records that they were soon crowned the team of the 90s. The postseason awards put an exclamation mark on a spectacular season for the Fred Buitengsu franchise. Sean Chambers was a runaway winner of the Best Import Award. The PBA Press Corps named Tim Cohn Coach of the Year. Three Alaska mainstays, Johnny Abarientos, Paul Hawkins, and Giorgio Lastimosa were named to the PBA Mythical Five along with Marlo Aquino and Alvin Patrimonio. 
and Avarientos. 5'8 became the shortest player in the history of the PBA to be named MVP. Just like Avarientos, Alaska stood tall in the storied history of the PBA. Rest your head. I was just really more thrilled for the players than I was for anything else. Um, I'm not a, a big, I don't celebrate a lot. You know, I don't go out after a game and, and, and get all excited and stuff like that. I like to go home and be by myself and just kind of let it soak in. And, uh, and to me, it was, just a, it was an accomplishment that I knew was really special that, that never, I'd never probably do again. I was telling Johnny and Joe and all of our talks, these are the times that you will remember for the rest of your life. These, this time right now is the best times in your life. You won't have a better time later. You never have a better time before. Right now are the best times in your life. 96 was the best time of my life. And I'll remember that as if, as no other time in my life. Grand Slam for my mother, Jamal, Katrina, Dora. No!
watching. Click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified with our latest videos.